This is just a little flavor of what I used to do, but Abdul Basit, I've known him for almost 20 years, and uh, it's been, uh, because I've been in uh, a permanent fixture in Dubai since 1987, which is when I f originally came here, and uh, a lot has changed in the last 25, 26 years. Uh, can you just share some of your thoughts, uh, because you are really looking after the backbone of this nation, which is the SME sector. How does it feel and what sort of weight of responsibility do you feel uh, that you're managing and, and cheerleading such an important sector? First of all, I want to thank you for, for this opportunity. And uh, really, uh, Shantanu, thank you very much. Uh, I remember when we, he came to my office to do this when we were just starting talking about and pushing the envelope of SMEs in the country and, uh, and specifically with the leadership. And uh, SMEs always been, uh, to be honest, overlooked. Uh, they were, uh, uh, it was a sector that was uh, by default there, but nobody really looked at. And it all started one point of time, uh, really, um, when uh, I moved to Dubai and the city. And I think Avi will relate this. He was my boss for two, three years. Then we had to close down something really visionary that today I think even Dubai SME is very close to what we were trying to do then. I was jobless for six months. He left. <laughs> uh, so um, really, the, the SME sector uh, today, they consist 95%. Uh, they contribute close to 40% uh, percent, uh, of uh, Dubai's uh, GDP, uh, employs 60%. Uh, of, of the uh, of the workforce uh, just last week we launched a rate uh, and his highness really launched it and uh, we intentionally made sure that uh, all the high level uh, people and specifically director generals and Dubai government to be there in a very closed forum uh, to really uh, emphasize the importance again and again on small medium enterprises uh, and uh, His Highness was very specific when it comes to the, uh, to the size and he asked about the size because there was always a debate between us in Dubai and the Ministry of Economy of the size and the impact and some of the dignitaries were there from the Ministry but it was very obvious from the results that we got uh, that really the, the size of small and medium enterprises is, is, is big, is very important and I remember in 2008 and 2009, when the, when the crisis hit, we were just launching Dubai SME then. And to be honest, I was very scared because, you know, it was foggy, it was uh, a distress, N nobody knew what, what's happening. Uh, uh, but uh, we had to do it and to know uh, exactly the size, the challenges, and who's there, who's out there, and who, what they're doing. And we were surprised, and, and we've passed this to the government too, and, and even to the banking sector. We were surprised that uh, a lot of these SMEs who came and applied for SME 100, really, they were on a double-digit growth. Uh, they're a huge contributor in, uh, to the economy. So for us, really, uh, uh, SMEs are as important as uh, the big uh, 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 ticket, uh, or you can say if it's do or a tasalat or amar, if not more important, really. All over the world, uh, family companies and SMEs are just like Dubai. Uh, they are the backbone of the uh, of the nation, and uh, and that's where the the juice uh, of the of the business actually flows. Now, over the last three years, and I, I was pretty tough in my questions in terms of how, uh, how much are the SMEs being supported. Apart from the political positioning, and I know we want to emotionally support them, are they really getting support? Dar yes, definitely they are getting support. Today, a lot of uh, such setup, uh, I mean, the, the, the companies are, uh, that, that are outside in the market. Uh, it's not as bad as that, but support is a very broad uh, uh, word, you know. If you're talking about direct 
uh, support, financial support, or if it's uh, emotional support or mentorship support. Yes, there, are, there is. Sure. Uh, let's talk about financial support. One of the key things is that the average SME that I talk to cannot get a loan from a bank. Um, the VC market is very, very uh, raw and young, and uh, only a few exceptions manage to squeeze through uh, to be able to make that. And a lot of funds have now been set up and so on. So I think it's being recognized. Yes. Um, how do you see that taking shape? And how do people really tap into that and uh, make great businesses here? This year and next year, uh, and I think uh, Sabu talked about this too, we're going into uh, a huge transformation, uh, structural transformation when it comes to the financial sector. Uh, one, the, the passing the, the, uh, the bankruptcy law is, is very important. We, uh, with the ministry, we, we started the, the movement when it comes to really uh, pushing for SMEs on, on the higher level uh, with Emirates uh, Development Bank, uh, company laws. Uh, just today, I was uh, looking at a report of the number of VCs, angel uh, funds that are getting created. So uh, the way banks used to bank with SMEs will change. Uh, I think with the, with the, uh, with the uh, bankruptcy law that, that will dramatically change. And the, but, credit, and the but, credit bureau. But it's very important, and I think uh, I've been uh, always very honest in this, we cannot keep on blaming the financial sector. There is a huge uh, um, um, importance or a, a task that all SMEs need to do is really when they get their, their, their house or their companies together. You're talking about governance, you're talking about having systems, you're talking about basic things of having their financials ready. Any investor, any bank, if, if Tarek, I come and tell you, listen, Tarek, I have a great idea, this is my company, the first thing you will ask me, where are your financials? And, and we have a serious problem uh, when it comes to the SME sector, when it comes of keeping their books and having their books in, in order. But this will change, and, and, and I encourage everyone, really. Uh, VAT is coming in, uh, and uh, with the bankruptcy law, uh, with all these structural change, you need to get your, your stuff together. You need to be ready for, for, for this. And I think when that comes in, really things will change. One of the key variables and the key questions I always ask and I think about, um, in our part of the world, both culturally and structurally, we are not welcomed to fail. We need to succeed first time. Because if you fail, you're toast. What kind of structures, advice, and you mentioned governance, which is really, really important. But can you help us with that? In, in terms of understanding, entrepreneurs fail. More will fail than they will succeed. Why can't we find ways to celebrate failure as learning experiences as opposed to you fail and therefore I am not going to uh, support you anymore? I mean, nobody will celebrate, if we be honest, of, of failure. They celebrate in Silicon Valley. Um, we've been there. We, we've, uh, the people fail, but it's okay. I think it's okay. But maybe we profile uh, failure and uh, culturally we have an issue it's not only uh, our culture the arab culture and muslim culture it's it's in this region and you know what this region been always trading it's always been thriving doing business but we do it differently we don't need to be like silicon valley but uh, when it comes to failure uh, i think uh, i've seen a lot of companies Today, you're talking about, I have in the portfolio of Dubai SME, close to 4,000 companies that we've helped to start. Uh, out of 20, a lot of them fail. But they come back and they restart. And I think structurally, going back to the bankruptcy law and all these things, it will make that culture different. Uh, we cannot change the region. We cannot change the way we think. I mean, look at it. When we take our kids to school, 
and if they come with lower grades, we are harsh on them. And uh, that's the way it is. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not go towards the schooling system because I think school, uh, the education system in the world sucks. Uh, and we are not learning enough and in our new technology environment and with all the shifts that are taking place, our education system is just not good enough for us to survive in the future. That needs an overhaul, but that's my opinion. Uh, this is your opinion uh, time. Now, there are a lot of big players here. Um, pe people who started from nothing have become great. Plus all of the big organizations like Emirates NBD, the telecoms companies and so on, what good things can they do to support the SME sector, both directly and uh, indirectly in terms of building movements and structures? One of the reasons that we have uh, launched rate where we will rate these companies is to prepare them to align with the government initiatives uh, related to having governance, uh, innovation, uh, raise pr productivity, and I think uh, there is a huge compliance from the private sector, depending that what the government is going to do. Uh, let us be honest, most of the initiatives that come, come from the government. Let's start from the, uh, Dubai Shopping Festival to, 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 to. It's time for the private sector, for the investors, with, if just I collect the people that are around here, if it, it, each one of them really contribute in creating one small fund. Um, angel fund, the VC fund, that really help these entrepreneurs. Inject smart capital. I know it's not all about money. It's the time that an, 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 an entrepreneur spends with this uh, group of investors, uh, in addition to, to, the, to, the, to the financial support. I think that's the biggest gap that we're, we're facing today. Uh, and that capital is more of a growth capital too that needs to be injected in this, in this sector. I think you're touching on a very important point because uh, uh, it's not just about them creating a fund, but uh, let's say I go to Emirates NBD or uh, Atis Salat or do. Uh, as an SME, I am personally an SME. Uh, they can support me in a hundred ways without money. They can support me in terms of infrastructure. They can support me in terms of uh, getting credit. We, we need to agree on something. Yeah. I would not use support. Okay. They need. To, they will do business with. They them. do business with. Them, absolutely. Uh, support. Yeah. It's a totally yeah. different yeah. mindset. I accept that. Uh, l l let them do business with them. And because put them then you start a, a, a good start. That's right. So support you, means your family supports yeah, yeah. you. Your yeah. friends will support. Fair comment. Fair comment. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they do business with them, but they do it in a way that enables them and nurtures them and empowers them to win. A lot of these companies doing business with them can actually win if. The, the larger corporations would work with them. Uh, definitely. Anyway, the large corporations, I'm one of them. I'm, I'm not a large corporation, I used to be. Uh, they pay us nine months late. Large corporations, major groups here. They don't even help the SME sector and I die while they're not paying me. Unfortunate. I think uh, good corporations, and sometimes I think this is where, for SMEs, they need to be selective even who they're dealing with. They should not, I need to uh, choose my words here, okay? Agree <laughs> to, to be with anyone. You need to be selective to who you're dealing with, as simple as that. So do your homework. Absolutely right, you're absolutely right. All right, um, in the, you talk a lot about the governance and I think it's a really, really important uh, place. What kind of advice that you can give to SMEs in terms of getting themselves fitter and readier for that governance even before we are uh, obliged to do it? To me, governance is, is, is critical for the success and the continuation of any business. So be it if it's, gov if it's government business or if it's private sector. I think uh, sometimes it's good, um, again this is one of the problems we have in this region, when boards 
get formed, people like to bring people who they say yes to them and they are okay with them and they're happily uh, ever after together and that's a critical problem, one of the problems really that uh, companies fail. Uh, so, so if they have a board in terms of the selection of the board, but not having a board, not having a governance system in place that really guides you and, and, and puts structure uh, a, a structural plan for, for, for to be sustainable. That's a, that's a big issue. Why why we ask? Because even why we're pushing the SMEs and specifically when I talk SMEs, there are people from a turnover of a five hundred thousand to I, I don't expect a, a small mom and pop shop to have like a board or something, but uh, anything above five million dirhams, ten million dirhams turnover, yes, they need to have. Uh, a governance system in place, have people uh, that not from inside, but from outside that really can help them and have a, a different point of view. Abdul Masad, would you like to give any bit of advice and things that we don't normally hear and you have insights and uh, so that people can uh, respond to that and then we'll open it up to a Q&A for you. If it's an insight, I cannot uh, talk about. So, insight. No, <laughs> not insight, but. Uh, <laughs> no, I think.